Introducing the Wall Street Journal Smartphone One. We don't have a splashy celebrity ad campaign, but we made this phone. And all it took was a short journey over the border to a Chinese city just north of us here in Hong Kong. The city of Shenzhen has become a mecca for electronic parts and talent, leading to new Chinese brands coming up from nowhere and grabbing market share from Samsung and Apple. Now, thanks to the Pearl River Delta's low-cost, ready-to-go supply chain, building a custom smartphone is not that difficult. That's exactly how we made the WSJ-1, which is only $70. It runs Android, has a touchscreen display, front and back camera, fingerprint reader, and it even takes two SIM cards and an SD card. There are thousands of factories in China's Pearl River Delta region that build products that companies can rebrand as their own. The most important ideas uh, coming out of Shenzhen is the technology is commodity. Building a mobile phone is a street affair. It's not a high-tech research. The company should think about what they want to do with a mobile phone, rather than whether or not they can build a mobile phone. So we went to a factory in Shenzhen called Lucky Star, browsed their catalog, and picked one of the handsets we liked. All the design and the quality and the functions are tested very good. We then discussed custom branding and features before they got to work. Say so yeah, I want to put the words yeah. WSJ. Yeah, no problem. You In a month, we would have our sample phone. <laughs> Thank you. But we wanted to take it a step further. We wanted to see how a smartphone was made. So, one of their engineers showed us. First, you have to get the parts. In this case, 17 of them. Beyond the obvious items like the screen, battery, and casing, you have all these tiny bits. This thin black cable carries the signal for the antenna, and this tiny orange part detects the amount of light nearby. All these parts can be sourced from suppliers within a short drive from the factory and can be found in Hua Qiangbei, a massive maze of electronic markets in the heart of the city. Every week, you go into Hua Qiangbei, that's a new product. Every week, you go in there, that's a variation of the new product. We look at the entire Hua Qiangbei market as a huge center maker group. Pavel is a maker currently based in Silicon Valley. He came to Shenzhen to build the fourth and final prototype of his idea, a wallet that wirelessly charges your phone. Chargo is wireless, safe, easy to use, and portable. Decide to just take my luggage and go to China to set up manufacturing and, and build the final version. And I know in China I can do it 10 times faster, so I just did it. I think he used the uh, laser cutter to uh, build that, uh, the structure of his prototype. He built his wallet here with the help of X Factory, one of the city's many accelerators that lure makers from all around the world. Everyone comes here looking to make the next big thing. This entire region has become a hotbed for talent, attracting people from all around China to be part of the smartphone boom. Here in the city of Guangzhou, just two hours away from Shenzhen, students are learning how to take apart smartphones and put them back together again. It's this access to human expertise, combined with the ecosystem of parts and low-cost production, that has given rise to some of the world's biggest hardware firms. A year ago, Oppo sold one phone for every three phones that Apple sold in China. Today, it's the other way around. Smart innovations such as better selfie cameras, along with prices way cheaper than an iPhone or S8, is what's winning over buyers. And it's taking a bite out of Apple and Samsung's market share. To survive, factories like Lucky Star have started taking smaller orders and have become one-stop shops for anyone that wants to build consumer devices. Its clients include the local Chinese government and ViewSonic, a Californian hardware firm for whom they make projectors for. The process of building a phone at Lucky Star would usually happen on a production line like this. A row of workers are each responsible for one part of the manufacturing process. They start by gluing the screen together, and then slowly, the guts of the phone are assembled. The main board goes into the case, then some parts are soldered, 
others connected with a gentle touch. After about eight minutes, you are left with a fully functioning phone. So here you are with the almost completed smartphone. And the finishing touch, a dual SIM card, an innovation from Shenzhen. And now turning it on, a completed mobile phone. The Wall Street Journal smartphone, anybody?